Hello and welcome to Explore Bella Italia TV. Today we take a closer look to the hidden treasure of the village Suave. My name is Julian and I travel around Italy to show you the most beautiful places in this country. I just knew that Soave produces fantastic wine. Anyway, the first time I visited Soave I was blown away by the dominating castle and the way how it's built. I immediately knew that I want to know more about this place, its history and the wine culture. As I did some research I found out that this year, 2022, Soave was rated as the best village in Italy uh, because really here you have uh, what we call la, la, la bella vita. Uh, we have wine, we have food, we have history and art, so really you come to Soave to relax. You come here to enjoy the small things in life. And I'm here because I'm curious. Before we dive deeper into the topic of the wine tradition, I wanted to know from Sarah, who is responsible for the tourist office in Suave, about the history of Suave itself. What is interesting about the castle of Suave is that, uh, differently from our castle that was in East Verona, it's the most uh, uh, well conservative because it was so important for, for strategy economics that no one destroyed it. So uh, you have to think that in the Middle Age uh, this area was really important because uh, it was uh, a crossing of Roman uh, streets, the Via Postumia, and so uh, at the end of uh, in South Soave there was this uh, big road used for trade and for a lot of people who were, were going here. And uh, it was also a place to check the north, because from the north there could be invasions from, you know, German and uh, North Europe. So from Soave till the mountain, uh, there are a lot of small castles, now mainly they don't exist, uh, but they were there. And Soave was the first one. So this is why it was so important as fortress. It was uh, a military fortress, so it was a place uh, to um, defend the people and the soldiers. So uh, once you visit the castle, you see that there are three courtyards. It was a way to protect the inner part where you have a big tower uh, to defend people, to run there in case of invasion. The biggest battle that happened in Suave was called the Lega di Cambrai. It was even one of the biggest battles in Italy. The Lega di Cambrai was a military coalition against the Republic of Venice which took part in the year 1508. The walls around the village contains 24 towers to protect the inhabitants. Nowadays they are living about 600 people inside the walls. The records show us that 366 people died in this battle. So you can imagine the losses they had to take. When Venice won the battle, they give a big flag to Suave to show them the appreciation of their loyalty to the Republic of Venice. Still today, on some special events, they're hosting the flag in the middle of the village on a stick that's called Antenna. It's a piece of history that never got lost in the further generations of this strong village. Okay, this is the history inside the walls, but I was curious if there's another interesting fact, because outside the fortress are already living around 7,000 people. So one thing to see that it's outside the walls, so usually it's not so famous in Soave, it's uh, the church of San Giorgio, St. George Church. Uh, it's important because San Giorgio was a saint that in Middle Age in Italy was really, really, a lot of people were praying him. Uh, because of the ability to uh, defeat the dragon. The dragon was seen as evil. And here in Suave, what was evil in the Middle Age? It was water. The river, uh, they had a lot of problems with floods. And in this church dedicated to him, you have a rib of a dragon. <laughs> so uh, if you go in the church and you look up, you'll see it. And it was something really that people at that time believed in 
uh, to, to defeat evil, they prayed him to, for the diseases or uh, when they lost their home uh, for, for the water, for the floods. Yeah, of course it's not a dragon rib, but it was a rib of a prehistoric animal that they found on the hills here. But let's them think it's a dragon. <laughs> a dragon that's spitting fire all day long will get thirsty at some point, and so am I. So let's talk about the wine. But before we do that, I want to thank our sponsor for today's episode, the Resort Corte Cavalli where you can sleep in a castle just 5 minutes from Lake Garda and 40 minutes to the village of Soave. You can find the link of this unique resort in the description below. Without wasting any more time, let's finally talk about the wine of Soave. I was lucky enough to get an appointment with Matalina and Milena. They both work for the Cantina di Soave and I even was able to take a closer look how the wine is produced. My name is Milena. I've been working for Roccas Veva Hospitality for almost five years and I've recently become a sommelier too. So Rocca Sveva is one of the seven uh, production facilities of Cantina di Suave that actually is our mother company. Uh, Cantina di Suave has a very long tradition because it was founded in 1898. Uh, nowadays Cantina di Suave has become one of the most important cooperative wineries in Italy and abroad and has more than 6,000 hectares of vineyards and more than 2,000 wine members and wine growers. Rocas Veva is um, the facility of Cantina di Soave where a very small selection of wines is produced. Imagine that every year we select uh, about 50 wine growers, although more than 2,000, uh, for producing these premium lime Roccas Veva and the sparkling wines that we produce here. So in the shadow of the majestic medieval Suave Castle, Roccas Veva was uh, built and the galleries of Roccas Veva were built starting from a shelter of the Second World War that was down here in the 40s. So starting from this pre-existing part, we started to dig in the late 90s and we created this um, town underground with thousands of barriques where our wines age for months and sometimes for years. So actually, um, when we started to dig across the Monte Tenda, the very first project consisted in going on straight. But at a certain point we had to stop because we found out an obstacle there was and still is a water spring in the rock. Uh, it started to be uh, an obstacle, but nowadays it has become a great present of the nature because it helps us to have constant temperature, cool temperature, of course, of 14, 15 degrees, uh, always, and a high humidity tax of around 80 percentage. So it is the perfect, the ideal uh, condition for the uh, aging, process of our wines. So I think that Suave wine is really special to me uh, because of its good balance. Uh, I think that it's a wine that has a very good part of acidity, freshness, that is due to the topology of grapes, of course, the Garganega and the climate condition where the Garganega is cultivated but it has also a good part uh, of softness, of roundness, that makes this wine unique, of course. And the most important uh, part for me of the uh, analysis of a Suave wine is the bouquet, because if you try to smell it, it is an explosion of fruitiness, blossoms, flowers, so it is very, very fruity and um, you can enjoy the power of Suave, starting from the smelling and then going directly to the palate. Um, as Rocas Veva is our selection, our premium line, we um, try to apply some rules in order to keep higher qualitative standards. So one of them is the hand picking of the grapes. So we think that um, uh, picking, harvesting by hands preserve the quality of the grapes starting from day zero, basically. Uh, then, we deliver the grapes not in big containers, but we use uh, smaller ones that are called bins. Um, each bin contains about 200 kilos of grapes in order not to 
crush the grapes and not to uh, make a uh, very first uh, fermentation start during you know, the transportation between fields and cantina and winery. Of course, we have many more rules and guidelines to follow, but of course it is top secret for us. So Cantina di Soave has in the last years renovated its entire production facility, starting for example from the bottling line that can be considered actually one of the most technological even in Europe. And I totally understand why. I never saw a machine like this in my life before. Where I entered the filling facility, I was blown away by its size. The corks are flying above my head and everything is working completely automatic. Every bottle gets photographed to check the condition of the bottle in order to deliver high quality. And what surprised me the most was the fact that... The bottling line is split in two different lines. One is more dedicated to the steel wines and the other one to the sparkling wines. Each hour we can produce up to 14,000 bottles. In total, 28,000 bottles per hour. I mean, just think about it. 28,000 bottles of wine per hour. That leaves me with the question, who is drinking this amount of wine? Nowadays, we export our wines all over the world. Uh, in more than 60 countries, actually. Uh, one of the most important markets for us is the north of Europe, of course. Germany, United Kingdom, Austria, all the Netherlands, and of course also Scandinavian countries are getting more and more important for us. Of course, also United States has market for us, as in the years become more and more important and American people can enjoy our wines also at home and they more and more buy our wines. So we can say that Soave can be considered a good amalgam of history with its medieval times and castle, um, wine tradition, quality. It can also be considered um, an outstanding um, garden because here we are surrounded by rolling Garganiga vineyards. Uh, so if you are a wine passionate, a wine lover, if you love drinking good wine, come to Soave because you will find medieval history, you will find a good glass of wine, of course, and you can come to visit us because it's worth it. I totally agree. I spent seven days in this village and explored unique events, lovely people, and a lot of history about the wine tradition and the castle. In short, Soave is a hidden treasure that you should explore. Thanks for watching and see you next time on Explore Bella Italia TV.